imagine the ones who keep acting attached to leech. I am no pastor, but actually preaching. Look up these letters and actually read. That was where it all began. Had to put in work every day. We got it in. We chased all our dreams, and now they can't believe it. We make it look easy. Welcome back to another episode of the Porch Podcast. Of course, I'm your boy B Jones, aka Bolo, and I'm kicking it with my man's A1 since day one. Come on, my dog. Man. D Smitty, D Nice, D Nail, however you want to call it, Smitty, get with it. How we doing, brother? Hey, man, I'm too blessed to be stressed. We here back on the porch another day, and uh, so happy to, to be here, man. How you doing, man? Man, blessed, highly favored. Obviously, every time we get on the, get on the porch, got to thank God first. So we ten toes down. Happy to be here, brother. So another day, another great episode. Come on, man, another great episode, man. And so excited to uh, for all our audio listeners. To uh, you haven't you can't see who we got on the screen yet, so we're excited to announce who our special guest is today. But before we do that, we got to shout out uh, one of our brand sponsors, Bet Online. Right now, man, it's the it's playoff time in the NBA. You got the UFL kicking off right now as well. WNBA is right around the corner. You got baseball starting up already, mm. man. So much going on. It's the prime time for all the sports fanatics and for the sports betting fans, man. If you want to. Make some money, man, on the gambling side. Go to betonline.ag and use the promo code BELIEVE, that's B-L-E-A-V, to get your 50% plus welcome bonus. And you heard it here on the porch first, man. So, but without sure. further ado, man, I don't, you know, but like, you know, we, we do things differently now. Back in the days, like, we, we would talk for like 10 minutes, then we bring the guest on. It's time to get into <laughs> the meat and like, potatoes. We, we gotta get straight to it. I don't like keeping our it. guests waiting, man. So, listen, man, this, this young lady that we have here on the porch, is the definition of the word vibe. Mm. In the dictionary, <laughs> when you see vibe, you should see this person. She's a marketing savant. She's from down south, moved around a lot. She loves sports. She loves wings. She loves <laughs> coffee shops. She loves jalapenos and red wine. Wow, it's you the, remember that. <laughs> it's the one and only Jasmine Williams. Welcome to the porch. Thank you so much. That was the best introduction ever. What the heck? Hilted. Like, that was Awesome, but no, I'm so excited to be here. Thank y'all so much for inviting me to be on. I'm super excited to hop into the conversation. I feel like we know you already just from D-Nails. I mean, I don't even know what I have to say. Crazy. You know I like wine, you know I like jalapenos. That's all you need to know. <laughs> right, it's the it. best feeling, Bolo, when we have a guest and like during the intro, I say something that like, they the like, the, how the, the hell do you the, know that? The, the, the light though, it's just the light. Like she, she like perked it's, up like, whoa, okay. I'm good yeah. now. <laughs> that that was cool. Cool. We do our research on the porch. So I uh, love that. I love it. That was so awesome. Good job. <laughs> I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that, man. Before we dive into it, man, how are you doing, man? Love the energy, man. It's, it's, it's middle of the week. I know we talked a little bit off, offline here before we even jumped into it, but I guess, how are you feeling right now? I'm feeling really good, to be honest with you. I'm so happy that it's spring. Um, <laughs> no Absolutely. more winter. The sun is out. Like, the weather is so good. So um, I feel like that just automatically brings good vibes. So I've been feeling really great lately. Um, you know, it, it's just a good time. So I'm good. Facts. For Facts. sure. For sure. So y'all know, y'all know I'm clocking in from Indianapolis. It's been cold, rainy, windy. Uh, so we finally got some 75 Dang, degree weather, y'all. So we, you know what I mean? We got a clap little emoji. We're going to hit the claps because we, uh, we always excited to just get some warm weather. We don't get it yeah. too often. So we take advantage. Exactly. Yeah, I'm out here on the West Coast in L.A. Okay, well. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Time out, time out, though. Y'all might be surprised. Like the last like five weekends, I'm not lying, it's been raining, which Dang. for L.A. is very like weird. Dang. It's crazy. That's you know it don't never rain in Southern California. Bro, I'm telling you, all throughout <laughs> the week, though, Monday through Friday, it's sunny, it's beautiful. Like, right, right. now, it's beautiful outside. Of course. Soon Saturday hit, it's raining. Right. They raining. inside, bro. What's going on? outside, bro. That's crazy. That. I don't know, but Damn. I don't like it. But well, we get back I mean, it. you could always come to Dallas. It's, it's sunny in Dallas, so. <laughs> Dallas is popping, too. Dallas, Dallas is low-key popping, popping right now. now. Y'all ain't, better than, y'all y'all ain't better than Houston, though, but Dallas Ooh, is popping. Okay. We're not going to go there. Houston is a little dirty, but I'm going to let <laughs> you know what's crazy? I, I have not. Y'all gonna? I'm gonna be embarrassed if I, if I say this. I have not been to Dallas or Houston yet. Wow. At all, bro. <laughs> like I have. That's tough, bro. I had a layover in Dallas, but I haven't like actually flew out to Dallas and, and like it. had a good time. But I've heard nothing but great things. Yeah, I mean, Dallas is off things. the chain. I like Dallas. Dallas is dope, and I feel like a lot of people from like 
New York and LA are moving here, which is so crazy. It's like a lot of companies moving here. Yeah. It's becoming like the fastest growing entrepreneurial city. Like it's crazy. So I feel like it'll be, it'll be the place to be in a couple of years, but that's just my opinion. I liked it. I like it. And they said some, I seen some stat, I don't know the specifics, but like that uh, Dallas has like one of the most like black millionaires. Like they got yeah. like the most black millionaires in yeah. Dallas. Like yeah, something like yeah. that. It's crazy. I don't know if I don't know. I didn't see the black thing, but I did see the most millionaires by yeah. population. So yeah, Dallas is a place to be. Is... It's a lot of old money here. Um, it's becoming a lot of new money here. It's just the place to be. So it'll be cool. And I mean, I'm sure we'll get into this later, but um, I, I have a feeling that it'll become like a a mini Las Vegas. I think um mm. gambling is gonna become legal here soon. So um yeah, I think it's gonna blow. So we'll see. <laughs> I love it, man. I, I, we got to bring the porch or take the porch to Dallas one of these yep. days. There you go. Live That's episode. Right. So yep. uh tour coming soon. Let's come on do now. It. Speak it, speak <laughs> it. But man, no, like I said, so excited to have you on here, man. And we got a lot to discuss today, but before we go into all the uh, kind of hot topics, as I'll discuss it, yeah, yeah. we want to learn more about you. So one of the questions that we like to start off all of our episodes is something that sounds simple, but it's really complex when you really think about it. So mm -hmm. when you hear this, tell me what your response is. Who okay. is Jasmine Williams? Oh, gosh. Okay. Jasmine is super complex. She is... Um... Take your time too. Take your time. I know. I'm like, God. Like, I know. I know. It's, a, it's really a tough question, low key. I know. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so very complex, multifaceted, um, very bubbly, um, very. Um, I don't know. Just a, a lover of people, a lover of good vibes. Um, a southern girl, but I've moved around a lot. Um, so you know, cultured and. Uh, adaptable, um, a mover, a shaker, <laughs> uh, but just really the girl next door. So that's how I would describe me. The girl Love next it. door. That might be the name of this episode, the right? Next door. Next door. Girl, that's the girl it. Next. Let me write it down before I forget. <laughs> Gotta write it down, bro. Gotta write it down unless it don't count. It don't count. Yeah, yeah there you go. I'm with the gems. Gems. <laughs> yeah, you that me. And, and one thing you actually mentioned, Jasmine, was that you did move around a lot. Mm -hmm. And I, I, you know, doing our research, we saw that you lived in five different states and seven yeah. different cities as you, you were growing research. up. Y'all did research. We she plugged like, right, in. Now, we up. plugged both like, of that. That's, That's so hard. awesome. Yes. No, I have moved around so much. Um, you know, when I was growing up, my dad was a coach. And so um, I was born in Maryland. Then we moved to Atlanta. Then we mm. moved to South Louisiana. Then we moved to North Louisiana. Um, and then once my parents split, um, I moved to Oklahoma for like three years, which was the weirdest time of my life. <laughs> and then uh, we ended up in Dallas. So went to Allen High School um, and then went to LSU. Um, and then after LSU, moved to Tampa um, and then ended up back in Dallas. So that's kind of my roundabout story. <laughs> talk about well-rounded. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I will admit, I don't remember anything about Maryland or Atlanta. So um, I was like one when we left Atlanta uh, or when we left Maryland and then two when we left Atlanta. So I don't remember anything about that. Um, so that's why, you know, I claim Louisiana as home because that's truly all I remember as a kid. So. That's true. That's real. Yeah. I feel like even like, even if you move around as a kid, like just within like the city though, you always doing just whole like specific pieces of pieces of like where you've been. Like, okay. like I've, I've moved around maybe three or four times growing up, but it's only like one true place that I remember like being yep. with like certain friends doing certain yep. things. Yeah. So that's, that's real. Yeah. It's only certain things that truly leave a, an impact and impression on you. So yeah. Facts. A thousand percent. A thousand percent. Let me ask you this, man. So like, you know, moving around as much as you did. And I know you mentioned that, you know, once your parents split, you said you moved to Oklahoma and that was like a weird time for you. <laughs> I know as a, as a kid, especially like that, that's kind of a weird phase for all of us. We're trying to like learn who we yeah. are, figure out our identity, meet new people, meet friends. And I, I can only imagine how, you know, you, you maybe were getting comfortable in a certain city in a certain place. And then boom, yeah. this big thing happens in your life. You're in a new place. You got to figure out new friends. Like, what type of, I guess, impact at that point in your life did that have on you? Yeah, it was very weird. Um, I will say, like, I, I know I don't speak. I'm probably very country to y'all, but I, I don't, I feel like I don't speak that country. Not really, I, not too bad. 
<laughs> but I used to be real country, like when I moved from North Louisiana to Oklahoma. And I just remember getting teased so badly mm. because I just talked different. And I'm like, what? Like, I'm not even saying nothing crazy, but I would be like, okay, go ask the teacher this. And they're like, ask? Well, I know yeah. STEM. I'm like, oh my God, here we go. So it was a, it, it was definitely a culture shock. Um, obviously experienced my a lot of racism there. Um, my first like in school racist incident happened there, uh, which I will never forget. Um, it was just a weird, a weird time. And it was that preteen age. So it was like nine to 12. So I was trying to figure out who I was like, you know, being a girl and like, you know, just figuring all that out. It was, it was really weird. Um, uh, but I will say like, I try not to think about me moving around a lot negatively. And I think that it, it did have a positive impact on me. And so you can honestly put me in any room and I'm going to know like how to navigate that room. Mm. Um, there's not too many rooms that I feel like uncomfortable in or feel like I haven't been around those people. You know what I mean? So, um, that's kind of how I, uh, look at, you know, my background and like moving around a lot. I just am grateful to be able to, you know, be adaptable and just, um, if I have to pick up and move somewhere, then I'm, I'm ready to go. Got you. That's, that's dope, man. You know, Bolo, life is always about like perspective and how you look at things, you know what I'm saying? And I, I, I love how you, looked at it and found the, the positive from it because like you said I, I really do think everything happens for a reason i'm a firm believer mm -hmm. in that and something that something that may seem i don't know negative in that moment a lot of times like as life goes on you look back it was actually it a, a bright spot positive. to it yeah. exactly it was a bright yeah. spot to it and it was something that helped you even now in your adult years of being mm -hmm. able to you know move and shake you know like you said earlier mm -hmm. and, and kind of connect with different people. So I, I like that. I think that's dope. Yeah. Yeah. 1000%. And I absolutely would not be in the position I am today if, if my journey was not what it was, you know, um, and not ended up in Dallas and, you know, having the connections that I have here um, and ended up where I am now, you know, career wise, it just, I don't think it would, would have happened had I not had the experience of, um, you know, being in different places when I was younger. So I think, you know, like you said, it was, it was all for a reason. And, God was the, the orchestrator of that one. hundred <laughs> percent. And I think it's cool too, to just get insight on like, obviously from the outside looking in, we look at all these coaches that, you know, on TV and how busy they are and how much they move around or how mm -hmm. certain situations or variables, you know, have them moving from city to city, city. And we just always thinking about like, dang, I wonder what the family doing. Are they going to stay back? Do they just travel? Mm -hmm. Do they move mm -hmm. with it? You know, and obviously to hear, you know, you talk about, you know, you moving around and seeing how, how well, you know, it worked for you and seeing all the positives. It's just some good insight for everybody to see that like, hey, it works. <laughs> yeah, it does work. But that's always my first thought. I mean, current players, you know, coaches, anything, right. seeing them be traded or like, you know, go mm -hmm. to a new spot. Like, that's my first thought is like, dang, what is their family doing? And right. I feel like a lot of people don't think about that. You know what I mean? Like, they're just like, oh, dang, how is he going to fit into this team and whatever? And I'm like, this guy has four kids and a wife. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. Right. Was, Forget the team. Like. The <laughs> you know, like what they have to find new friends. They have to right. you know, have build a whole new community. So that's the part that I feel like people don't see it. Don't even mm -hmm. think about. And, um, you know, I think it's always top of mind for me. Um, so, yeah. Nah, for sure. It's funny you mentioned that. Cause like, I think fans forget that athletes are human. Are human. Like they just see them, what they do on the field or the court or whatever. And that's mm -hmm. all they care about. And they think they're just a superhero. And it's like, hold on. Yeah. Like they make a lot of money and their life's a little different. Sure. But then the mm -hmm. day they got the same, they got bills. They got, they getting arguments at home they got married. They got kids. Mm -hmm. They got like every other thing that you got. Yeah. And yeah. people literally they, like they they dehumanize these these athletes. 100%. Yeah, yeah. They're waking up in the middle of the night to comfort their kids the same way you are. You know what I'm right. saying? They tired as hell at work too. So yeah. yeah, they're definitely um still human. And I do wish people kind of understood that under yeah, understood that more. Um, you know, it's really sad the way people talk about um and also like now in, in the social media world, like they're gonna see it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Like people just right. be saying stuff as if they're not even gonna see it. It's like it's just um very um it, it, there's a lack of empathy i think um when it comes to sports that needs to be <laughs> kind of addressed so but you mm -hmm. know you know how that goes <laughs> for sure, for sure. And, and then you kind of speaking of sports man and kind of you know obviously we know that this is a you have a love for sports you work you work in the industry now kind of educate us on where the initial love for sports stemmed from man so i always tell people i'm like i literally have always felt like Everybody's team remember the Titans. I felt like Hayden Panettiere's character when she was <laughs> like coaching and like in the locker room. Like that's literally what I thought I was when my dad was coaching at Grambling. Like I used to be in the locker room. I was in the facility like 
I thought I was a part of the team. You could not tell me I was not a part of the team. Um, so I think that's when my love for football started. Um, you know, I think the fact that my dad was comfortable enough to have me in the facility and like, you know, going to work with him every day really helped me feel comfortable in that environment. Um, you know, while I did not see as many uh, women in in football, um, it wasn't until later to, when I realized like, oh, wait, I can have a, like a career in this. But because yeah. you know, I think back then, most of those roles women held were administrative. Like, you know, they were um, they were kind of the assistants to the coaches or, or whatever it was. It definitely didn't see any, uh, you know, female football coaches or, uh, you know, coordinators or things like that. Um, but I, I'm definitely grateful to have been exposed to the sport super early and and um, just get comfortable there. Um, so, you know, and I'm sure we'll get into kind of my journey, too. But I got out of sports for uh, a little while after in Tampa and I was like so unhappy, like the most unhappy I've ever been in my life. And um, that's kind of when I realized, like, no, this is your passion. Like, this is what you are supposed to be doing and and like pursue it full force. So, yeah, I started super young and I just kind of tried to give it away but i could not <laughs> love it so love it and, and you mentioned you know your father a couple of times man obviously you know you two having that tight knit kind of relationship and and you coming to going to the locker rooms with him while he's coaching like that's something that's not always uh like just being real not all parents would necessarily do that not all fathers would necessarily even be comfortable bringing their daughters in mm -hmm. in that environment so i think that's another thing too just from a, a parent to daughter relationship, father to daughter relationship that I think is dope as well that, that you had had that connection and, and had that experience as well. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. Yeah, no, it, it's super awesome. I think, you know, I honestly, whenever he was doing it, I don't think he put that much thought into it. Like, right. I, it just like, like <laughs> you coming with me, like I'm not about to see you with a babysitter, like whatever. So I, I don't even know if he understands, which we, I, when I did that surprise interview, we talked about that in the interview. Um, yeah. So I'm hoping now that he understands the impact that that had on my career and the career that I chose. Um, but I think at the time he was just being a dad and just you know, yeah. <laughs> like taking his kids to work with him because he had shit to do. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but so yeah, just no. that Come simple, on. Bolo. I got to go. He's like, got time to be Y'all come on, Jazz. Come on. <laughs> come on. I don't care if you don't want to go. We here exactly, today. Exactly. Exactly. So I was in there with a skirt on. Like, I'm obviously such a girly girl, but like also a tomboy. Like, I was like in a skirt, also throwing a football. Like, it, it was it was all good. So, so yeah. Okay. Get you somebody who can do both. That's what they say. Exactly. So you know, obviously, oh, go ahead, go ahead, bro. No, go ahead, you good, you got it. No, I was going to say, so, you know, obviously you are the the daughter of Doug Williams, you know, mm -hmm. first black quarterback to win a Super Bowl. Um, working in this space and being in this space, obviously your dad being so decorated. Have you ever felt like that pressure of wanting to be the best you can be? Or is there ever a situation where, you know, you kind of look back and, you know, think about your dad when you're kind of continuing to do what you do as you operate in this space? Yeah, it's funny you ask that because um, he gets pretty upset that I actually I don't use his name enough is what he mm -hmm. tells me. Um, I think I go into every job like without them knowing who my dad is because I I personally want to know that I got this job off of my own merit. Mm -hmm. And then they obviously eventually kind of find out. Um, and so I think it, it helps me not have to feel like I have to live up to anything um, because I know that I got into the door myself. And then, um, you know, once they find that out, it's kind of like, OK, like they know that I got there myself. And this right. is just kind of a cool fact. Add, yeah. But, add it right, on, on yeah. the side. Um, so so to be honest with you, I don't feel as much pressure because I've kind of set it up that way myself <laughs> so that I don't feel that pressure I will um now I do have a brother that also works in the league and he is named he's my dad's name <laughs> and so he probably has a very different experience um in, mm. in that regard but I do think that I have um it's to my benefit that you know I'm a woman and you know mm -hmm. people just don't assume that okay obviously Williams, that's such a common last name. Like right. no kind of makes the uh makes that connection um uh, right away at least. And so um I think I do have that to my advantage and I, I try to kind of keep it on the down low until until it needs to be um uncovered. But uh, but yeah, I I try not to feel pressured or anything. I know I'm carving my own path and my own kind of journey um and, and whatever that looks like. And so I feel I feel comfortable honestly where I am. And I, I, if anything, it's a blessing, you know, to to have that legacy behind me um mm -hmm. and carry it forward in my own way 
Love that. That's, that's so dope. And it's funny you mentioned that too, because like again, we we met what years ago. We we spoken mm-hmm. before, and mm-hmm. one thing that I've noticed just from afar is that what you just said that you you don't necessarily like push that out there that that he is your dad, and mm-hmm. I, and that leads to this question too, because I've seen this in so many different like spaces and industries where uh, people people who just are ignorant who, who don't have the information don't know they assume that oh, that's your daddy or that's your mama. That's the only reason why you got that job or the opportunity. Have you ever at any point, uh, I guess, got that type of energy from somebody or someone ever like came at you the wrong way and mm-hmm. kind of used that against you? Oh, 1000%. I mean, I think people, as, obviously, you know, people will find out and that the people that you work with closely kind of realize like, okay, she worked for this, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But yeah. there's always those other people that, have no idea how you got this job. And so their automatic assumption is she clearly got this job because of my dad. I called my dad and said, hey, just to let you know, I'm working for the Cowboys. And he's like, what the hell? Like, what do you mean? (laughs) Um, He had no idea. So, um, but people most definitely automatically assume um, that that is how I got any role that I have if it pertains to sports. Um, And I I don't, I honestly don't have a problem with that because, you know, I think, um, uh, I don't know. I just think I'm trying to be politically correct, which I, I <laughs> but um, I know I'm fine with people thinking that that is how I got my job because nepotism is nepotism, right? Yeah. <laughs> it exists. I'm going to be real. I have Facts. no problem with nepotism at all. Okay. And yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I don't have a problem with nepotism and I definitely don't have a problem with black nepotism because I feel like it does Facts. not happen enough. And so, uh, you, yeah. you know, we need more of it. Yeah. Right. I think other races are very comfortable, you know, passing jobs down, which is a beautiful thing. If your dad starts a company and, and you are able to give your son a job, like that, do that's that. the goal. That's why you do it. Like, that's do that. Or if you're able to give your son and, or daughter, for that matter, a yeah. million dollars to start a company, do that. Like, right. that's what you nice. are doing that for. And so um, I think that when black people get in that position and they, you know, are able to pass things down or build a legacy or whatever, do that. You know what I mean? Like, so, um, I have zero problem with people assuming it. Like, I'm like, what you can, I know, you know what I mean? I know how I'm I'm comfortable. Like, um, you know, it, so it it doesn't bother me. (laughs) That's real. Regardless, whether you did or got help or not, I'm here. (laughs) So I'm here. Like, you know right. what I'm saying? And who's to like I can't I also can't discount his name. You know what I mean? Like I know that look and um jeans and all that good stuff plays a factor. You know what I mean? Yeah. I know yeah. I got an internship right after college um from his, you know, network, whatever. Knew, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They knew who my who I was. So I can't just credit everything to oh my, I'm just such a heart. You know what I mean? I yeah. definitely know it plays a part. But uh, two things so, could be true. Two, two things could be true. You can bust your ass and earn it. And then also it helps that this is your dad too. And that's okay. Like that's exactly I it. know when I have kids make you double road, powerful. If I can help, <laughs> I'm gonna help. Shoot. Like here's what it yeah, is. I hope you do. Yeah, hope like, <laughs> even on a, a, a different level, like I've helped people get no, my my nine to five is at Fox Sports. I've helped right. people get jobs at Fox and internships, and people have looked out for me. So it's like I I I mean to me, it's about pool. relationships. The climbing you know pool effect. Yeah, yeah, it's all about yeah. relationships. And I mean, I know obviously the the common saying is is not about what you know, it's who you know. I think it's about both. <laughs> you yeah. know, yes. I think who you know will get you in the door. I think what you know will keep you there. Keeps you in the door. Uh, correct, exactly. So, uh, but no, that who you know is still still very important, and relationships are kind of um are, are extremely important. So I wouldn't discount that at all. For sure, For yeah, sure, man. And then real quick, but before we dive into something else, we got we got to shout your mom too, though, man. I, I feel oh, like a yeah. lot of times, like we, we always like. Well, it's Thank popular to just highlight pops for obvious reasons, but your mom, if I'm not mistaken, she dropped a book recently called "Suddenly Single." Can okay, you get so- a little bit of knowledge on that? I'm so glad that you just said that because I'm like, I have a book by my dad and my mom in my house. Like, who can say that? <laughs> right. That's that's you want some different. That's a whole that's different. crazy. Like, I'm so proud of her. Yeah, um, cool. and yeah, she definitely has been in the shadows for a long time. You know, it's with two kids that work in the NFL, they always are are, you know, immediately crediting um my dad, which not no discredit to him, right, but right. my mom is a soldier, like. She is so dope, so amazing. She's a chief of staff at a company right now. Like she just is a shake, also a shaker and a mover. That's how I learned to be a shaker and a mover. Right. But um, and she is a marketing genius. Um, 
And so that is how I, that's kind of how I married the two um, is, you know, I saw her be a marketing executive for years. I saw my, you know, dad in sports, I was raised in sports and I'm like, I think there's a way that I can put these two together. Um, so yeah, definitely no discredit at all to her because she was extremely pivotal, pivotal in um, my career. So yeah. Her name is, her name is Tanya, right? Tanya. Yep. Tanya. Tanya. Shout, shout, shout out to Miss Tanya. Tanya. Shout out to Tanya. <laughs> like, like, we have to drop names on here and show love. Yeah. So right. Watch so. Yeah. <laughs> well, 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 mom, I'm gonna I'm apologize in advance because it might get a little spicy later on. Uh -oh. Nothing too crazy though. <laughs> well, my mom is wilder than me. She'll love it. She'll love it. That's cool. tough. Cool. Shout out to the moms. Mother's yeah. Day is around the corner too, man. Make sure y'all get y'all mama something. Yeah, yes, get y'all yes. mama something. <laughs> Bolo, real quick, let's switch gears, man. Can we dive into LSU a little bit? You are an LSU alum. You were yeah. there from 2012 to 2016, correct? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I uh, I tell my mom, I'm like, I definitely stayed an extra semester so I can have another football season because it was yeah. it was just I, so, as soon as you said 2012, 2016, I started thinking about the players that, that came out around that time. Yeah. It, was, it was some dogs there while she was we there. We couldn't Bolo. even get a championship. I'm like, this I know. is crazy. I was like, damn, they, they didn't get a ship though. I, I don't nope. know. They, they had OBJ, Eric Reed, Quan Alexander, I think. Jarvis uh, Landry. Jeremy Hill was there, I think. Lionel yeah. Collins, like yeah, it was crazy. So many um, NFL players. Yeah, but I mean, right. we always gonna be stacked. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. always LSU always gonna pull people. So, but yeah, it was. We definitely thought we was gonna get a championship, and it never, never happened. But that's okay. It came a couple years later, so Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. we Thanks. grateful. Shout but no, tomorrow. LSU was so fun. I, I freaking that was like the best years of my life for sure. Uh, I hate to say that because I'm like, okay, the best years are ahead, but so far as it stands. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure when I get married and have kids, that will change. But at, at the moment, LSU was definitely the best years of my life. It was so fun. So for people who don't know about the Bayou, like give us some insight. Like, oh, let God. us let us know about the campus, the environment, <laughs> the scene. Like, I'm just trying okay. to I'm just trying to play. Imagine just p oh, picture shit. it for me. Okay, let me go ahead uh, and take my sip real, real, real quick. I mean, <laughs> I feel like okay. So first of all, it's 45 minutes from New Orleans, so. You're going to New Orleans every, at least I was going to New Orleans every other weekend, like at, just on GP. Yeah. Um, you get out for Mardi Gras, so you go into Mardi Gras every every year. Um, you have crawfish boils on campus, so you Ooh. in the spring, mm -hmm. so you doing that. Um, the we have like a little, you, I think every college town has this, but a little area called Tigerland where all the bars are. So that was mm -hmm. lit, you know, open bar at Fred's for ten dollars, all, all you could drink like for two for hours. Ten? No, y'all turn ten dollars. Yeah, crazy, <laughs> crazy. <laughs> yeah, those were crazy nights. So yeah, it was just, it was just like one of those. And I mean, it's South Louisiana, and then I'm like, my my whole family is there, so it's like if I wasn't doing something at school, I was eating red beans and rice at my grandma. House. Mm. <laughs> like, so it was just I think that made it like 10 times better for me because I was back home like because I had been away from them for so long so just being with them and and spending time with them my my uh, brother's son his first son my nephew was born at that time uh, so I was able to you know be at his birth you know things like that just wouldn't trade that for the world so uh, it was it was an unbeatable time. <laughs> Damn, do you miss the food? I know I love me some uh for sure. Food. I'm always trying to like I was just one of my cousins from BR just moved here and I was texting with her. I'm like, we gotta find some crawfish. <laughs> like we got to figure it out. I'm always trying Sound to figure good. out where the food is. Um, and that is where I say Houston had does have Dallas beat because on the food side, they got some yeah, spots. Because Louisiana people move to Houston more than they move to Dallas. So it's a lot of restaurants mm. down there that are like. Cajun restaurants that that just aren't yeah. here. So, so you so so what you saying? What I was saying is that New Orleans got nah. the best food in the country. Mm, yeah, I wouldn't. I actually now this is controversial, but I actually would not say New Orleans. I say Louisiana. But Louisiana. I think yes, but I think the best food is like out like outside of New Orleans, like Lafayette. And, oh, and, you know, yeah, Damn. like Charles. I think, yeah. So, but but when we talking about the best foods, though, are we specifically just talking about like seafood, or are we talking about all types of food? Like, no, 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 no. We are definitely not like a Chicago, like, <laughs> like definitely Cajun food. <laughs> so glad you brought that up, I'm, Jasmine. I'm so glad you brought that up because I'm I'm originally a Chicago native. Are you? My brother here is an Indianapolis native, and he swears that Indian food is Chicago food. I did not mean to start this. Listen. It, 
it, it's a long history God. on this show. I'm so glad you said that. that hold on, night. hold on, Bolo. I don't know. Did I say our food was overall better? Or did I say our chicken was better than y'all chicken overall? Oh, damn. With, I would bro. definitely come try I feel like chicken. if you say chicken, you saying food. No. I'm Listen, I'm gonna tell you this, Jazz. Indianapolis yeah. is very slept on. People, especially let's be real, especially oh. black black people here in Indiana, and we just think, oh, it's number racist white people walking around. No, no. Indianapolis. You know what I think? We you know what I, think? I think about Gary, Indiana. Oh, that's the hood. That's right. That's right next door to Chicago. That's right there. That's my first. That's right next door. Like I know y'all got. I know y'all got. But some but no, they they up the road though. You gotta keep going. You gotta keep going a little bit more south. Okay, okay. Apple's like right in the middle. It's probably about what two and a half. Okay, okay, okay. About three hours away. Damn. But let's be real though. We do got some good food in Apple. I got right. some decent food though. But when they come to Chicago though, bro, everything from the 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 goddamn chicken wings to the pizza to the hot have... dogs to yeah. the pasta. The pizza's overrated. To... Keep it funky. Stupid. It ain't right. New York pizza. You just go there and you always just get want to get a deep dish. We got some of the best thin crust in the land. Everybody yeah, just think I'm a thin crust for... girl. Come on. Yeah, but I just went to Chicago for the first time last month uh, for St. Patty's Day. One of Ooh, my best friends, yes, yes, one of my best friends just moved there, like off a of whim. She's never lived there, uh, but always wanted to, and so she finally decided to. So a bunch of us from college went and up there, and I had literally so much fun from the time I got off the plane, from the time I boarded the plane. It was a blast, but I feel like I didn't eat, and I've been hearing so much about Chicago food, but I'm like, we was like, you know, ordering. I, I mean, I did have pizza, but we was just ordering random stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, and that's because that's because really like, you was probably turned the whole time, so you wasn't really like, up. you know, you just getting greasy stuff quick. Period. Boom, boom, so you my stomach up. up. I had yeah. a blast, so I will definitely be back. So it's I'm funny, the last time I been to Chicago was like 2016, and it was for St. Patty's, and then they so they funny. turn they Bless do it right it. in Chicago. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> what and I love St. Patty's Day. Dallas has a really good St. Patty's Day. I will say it's like a whole bunch of black people out. Obviously, yeah. that is not a black holiday at all. But Dallas just turns it into the, into a black holiday. So we do a really good here. So I was like, you know what? Let me go to Chicago where it's supposed right. to be really, really good. And I will say, y'all, y'all did that. Come on, appreciate that. <laughs> hey, hey, you know what, Dinell? Black black folks funny because we find a way to take a holiday and turn Period. it upside I'm down. It. <laughs> hey. It's all hey, shit now. Pat, hey, Cinco it's de Mayo. Hey, hey, man, I ain't seen so many black folks barbecuing on Cinco de Mayo in my Period. life, man. This our Turn shit. it up. But black hey, people, shit, look, we, we got the tacos down, so. Facts. Facts. <laughs> I go crazy with the taco. That's my, that's my hey, favorite. Hey, so many black folks cooking tacos the way they want to now. It's crazy. But they're taking everything out the of it. Cilantro, the cilantro, the everything. They be Chopped onion. With it. <laughs> Barbacoa, Facts. we doing that. Yeah. All of it. Yeah, we going to steal a holiday for sure. <laughs> I love it. Though. I love it. And I think it's the perfect transition as well, Jazz. I mean, you talked about you know turning up, having a good time with some of your college friends. You know, traveling to Chicago. I feel like when I look look at your IG page, man, you come off as someone who loves to have a good time, not afraid to travel, have drinks, etc. How do you define what a good time is? Like, 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 what's your like, what's your perfect day? Like, if you could just... Oh my gosh, I'm so glad you got that. <laughs> oh, so <laughs> my perfect day obviously starts with walking my dog, like. That's that's number one. No, no, yeah. A French bulldog. He's bad. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> he's bad, but I'm gonna take him out. I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna play some old school. I'm gonna play for the love of you. I'm gonna start my day off there. Um, part one and two, Isley Brothers. And um, then I'm gonna go to the coffee shop and get some really good. I'm gonna get a lavender vanilla latte iced. Perfect. Yeah, vanilla latte okay. iced. Yeah. Okay. okay. Start there. I'm gonna get some uh, avocado toast. Of course, good. That's a perfect start to the day. And then I'm gonna meet some friends for bomb food, bomb drinks, and bomb conversations. We're gonna start at about two o'clock. It's gonna go to like six. All right, four hours. We're gonna be good. Oh, y'all kicking it then? That's a nice little window too. Right? It's a good. Nice We're gonna be outdoors. The sun's gonna be shining. It's gonna be a great day. Just great vibes. All good. I'm gonna come home and then I'm gonna cook a meal like vibe out pour myself a glass of wine put the tunes back on and make a meal that's the perfect day for me damn so hold on that sound <laughs> like is that a book or a movie which one which, which <laughs> one would you want that to be that like it just started with the toast for me i'm like okay she real descriptive to the to the toast because to i know the, what i like latte like for real yeah i can tell you where i'm gonna get it from too i know what i like <laughs> that's cold i'm also i'm currently in the process of like just doing things for me because I feel like I'm always like 
worried about other people. So I'm mm. like, okay, I need to figure out like the things that I really enjoy and really like. And so I just recently kind of did this <laughs> yeah. myself and just figuring out like what would my perfect day look like doing right. stuff for myself and so that's what it would look like so that's why i came off the dome like that that's See, it's crazy that's, i appreciate Bolo, that this happens every single episode god we, thank we you go there we go because there every single time man certain things just happen it's hard to you can't even explain it yeah where just certain connections happen on our shows where i had no idea but i had no idea that you recently did this yeah and then, boom, it just happens like i love that synergy synergy that's it that's it hey don't sleep on the pour into yourself y'all you gotta yep. pour into yourself you gotta love yourself you gotta make sure you're doing stuff that makes you happy right and then that's gonna allow you to do more for other people when you can yeah yeah yourself. and what i learned this is a gym that i'm just gonna drop i know this has nothing so, to do with anything. but it. what i learned is like if you don't pour into yourself, you're always expecting other people to pour into you. And then you're mad because they're not pouring into you. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But you're like, why are Absolutely. you not, why are you not filling my cup? And then you realize like, damn, did I fill my cup? Uh -huh. <laughs> did I do? Exactly. Right. Look empty to me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So that's something that I'm currently learning is like, you got to fill your own cup first. And then you're not going to be worried about other people filling your cup because you already did it. And everything else is overflow. Facts. So. That's real. Hey, hey because hey. Go, the, go, go, go. The, the the unrealistic <laughs> expectations that we put on other people and create yeah. scenarios and create like this this beef, right? You know, oh my with, God. with ourselves and other people that we're not even having beef with that person, but we having Facts. beef with that person. That's you know what I'm saying? Based upon our conscience and what we think they should be doing for us. Oh my God, we about to take them to church today. Literally, I'm like, look, this is Gosh. God. This is, yeah. This I is have God. like a competition right now. It's, it's like, crazy. it's like jazz shot of three, switch that. Polo <laughs> shot of three, switch it. It's giving me in the I don't Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> It's a tie game right now. So I love it. Who is the winner? I love it. Yeah, no, I'm that's exactly kind of the lesson that is is looming right now over my life. So no, I'm I'm right there with you, Brian. Uh, I love, <laughs> love that. it, man. And, and to me, one way of pouring into yourself, at least one way that I like to do it is by taking trips, going on vacation. Mm -hmm. I know you like to travel, man. I've seen you on on boats and islands and you know, living your best life. What has been your favorite trip you've taken so far? Okay, so um, I don't even remember what year it was anymore. It might have been 2018. My oldest brother, my oldest brother is the coolest person I know, hands down. He lives in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. He works for uh, a venture capitalist firm. Like, he is the coolest person I know. Correct. <laughs> uh, he, yeah, he used to be a stockbroker on Wall Street. Like, he's Ooh. just... The most big bro dog. invest in the poor big, big bro <laughs> yeah, dead, big dead ass like he is so cool but anyway yeah. he literally was like you know what and me dj and him adrian are like the closest like we are we talk every single day all day about all the current events like everything um and he was like you and dj need to get out more like y'all y'all not doing enough yeah. so he bought me and dj tickets to paris Man. like one summer just randomly and was like we're going to paris for a week and like balled out. I mean, not balled out, but you know, like we, yeah. we, he, and he's Get so it. cultured. Like he got an Airbnb, like within, like we didn't stay in a fancy, you know, par Parisian culture. Hotel. Yeah. We was, we was with the people, like he no. Was immersed. You was immersed in the culture. <laughs> immersed yeah. in the culture, going to museums. Like it was so amazing. Like I, I don't want to say nothing will ever top that because I'm hoping that I'm hoping to go to the south of France <laughs> um, at yeah. some point, but, um, that was definitely the best trip that I've ever had. And like, we just have so much fun together. We're literally like all the same people in three different bodies. So we just had a blast. I think uh, Scorpion, Drake's Scorpion yeah, yeah. had just dropped uh, the day. Like we was at the club in Paris and it dropped. We was just Ooh, having a blast. It was so much fun. Drake um, dropped in Paris, you in the club. It, it was dropped in Paris. I was like, damn, this is kind of That should make me want to just get a bottle and be like, I'm yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, vibe yeah, out. Right. yeah yeah and we all like listen to the same music we love drake like it was it was just an experience it was so fun but just shout out to him shout out to you adrian for making us cultured big bro <laughs> but, shout out to you man hey yeah, that's, a, big bro. that's a real that's a big love bro for real he like, loves like, he love y'all for real Which i got man. a little brother little sister i ain't doing my job right now see now i'm giving y'all i'm giving y'all you know motivation <laughs> some I'm motivation i'm about to apple pay my sister about 20 dollars real quick <laughs> Man, yeah, look, that's what you can life. do. That's what you can do. <laughs> but hold on, real quick. We gotta we gotta skip forward because you brought up oh lord. 
Drizzy Drake. Oh, okay. sound like a Drake fan. Sound like you a Drake fan? I am. Uh, you I'm know me, Bolo. Too, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm Team Young Money. So like, what? Not Team Young Money. Little Wayne's <laughs> my goat. You can't yeah. tell me nothing different. Okay. So everything, everything under that. So I like Nicki. I like Drake. I I think Tiger drops bangers every other summer. I'm anything Young Money. That's me. I love that. Everybody's right. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Everybody right now is going at it's like Drake versus everybody I right it. now. I love yeah. it. Rick I love Ross, it. Future. We got yeah. we got the beat makers, Metro Booming. He keeps oh. taking shots. Yeah. What's your take right now on this on this rap beef of everybody versus Drake? Like, what's your take? Yeah. So I am a Drake stan. Like, I love Drake down. I think, yeah, I love Drake. However, I do think he has gone off the deep end in the last two years his last project pissed me off not last project but her loss or whatever when he was taking shots at meg was not fucking with that at all okay, okay, okay. that's not cool not cool yep. so he has me going off the deep end however i do not understand what he did to piss everybody off like i'm i'm truly lost at that it's a lot of people like okay future metro weekend who else kendrick kendrick, kendrick rick ross rick ross rick ross John ja Moran, it's <laughs> like, where do you come from? <laughs> like, everybody just jumped on the train. And it's weird to me because I'm like, so do y'all have a group chat where y'all like, hey, let's get on this nigga drink My now. turn. That, sh that shit is weird. <laughs> like, that's weird. That weird too. Or you hear somebody like, okay, two people don't fuck with Drake. I get it. Okay. You hear that they they not fuck with Drake and then you just like, hey, let me jump in. That's weird. <laughs> right. The timing is crazy. I feel it. I feel it. That's just my opinion, but I fucking love Future, so I'm still gonna listen to everything he puts out. Yeah. Um, but I do think Drake is very calculated. I think that I did listen to his diss track, and I thought it was great. Yes. I do think he has more, you know, that he knows that he hasn't, you know, no, facts. <laughs> yeah, facts. and so yeah, I would, I would hate to be beefing with Drake. I, I will say that. So I agree. I agree. I I just think his what makes Drake so great is just like he's an entertainer. Yeah, exactly. like so he's gonna find he's gonna find different things to do to exactly. make sure that he's always attracting the the crowd and the attention. Right. You know what I mean? Yep. So like all these people, you know, taking a stab at Drake right now, it's like it's it's making you relevant too. You know that mm -hmm. just speaks to you know his goatness too. You know, what I'm saying? So, yeah. yeah. And I just saw him. Uh, I think earlier today I saw him post something. You know they've been posted back and forth. I'm yeah. like, okay, things y'all saying BBL. Drake. I'm like. Yeah, this is what y'all used to say about women. The subliminals be silly. I'd be like, <laughs> it ain't subliminal no more. I saw Drake posted like Metro Boomin on like on drum the drums, like, the drums. That yeah. was crazy. I was busting out laughing. But even today, he posted like some exchange with him and Rick Ross, and um, he said like you should have just asked for a feature. And I'm like, yeah, if you wanted to be relevant, like just ask the dude for a song because. Yeah, <laughs> it's not, it's just not necessary. So I do wonder, I'm like, is this all like a scam? Like, are they just entertaining us for fun? Because there's no way. <laughs> I'm gonna say this, man. Album on the way. Yeah. Shout out to Kendrick Lamar, because in my in my humble opinion, I think his initial, you know, few shots, you want to say, yeah. like at Drake and Jacob. And to me, it wasn't even like shots. He just was like, yeah. it was it was He's a competitive song. He said, right. ain't no big three, it's, it's big me, I'm number big one. Big me. That's yeah, what hip hop has stood on competition. I didn't look at that as like it was some dangerous, some violence. No, it was just competition. And yeah. from that point on, it's just been like, you know, Cole did his initial drop and then he took a step back, which I did not like at all. I'm a big Cole fan. Who does that? That's weird energy, man. Weird like, vibes. I don't like that. Yeah. Uh, but then Drake dropped, then Ross dropped. So now it's, you're seeing it starting to do a trigger down effect. And to me, mm -hmm. this will bring out the best of hip hop. So I, I'm I excited. Do agree. For I do agree. I'm very excited. I want uh, Drake and Metro to keep dropping because I mean, uh, Future and Metro to keep dropping because we still going to play that. Um, mm -hmm. And I want nice. Drake to keep dropping diss songs because he never used to do this. So like, mm. I think Meek Mill like woke him up, which that's a whole different thing. I'm but tired of Meek Mill, y'all. I, I ain't going to even, I ain't going to even lie to you. I'm tired of Meek. Yeah, I think everybody is. Me, me energy him. just yeah, he's different. weird. He's just moving different. I'd be he's like, weird. Yeah, dreams and nightmares ain't really. It ain't hit. It ain't gonna right? be hit the same. I gotta just, skip that song because I yeah, like you gotta like you just gotta leave stuff where it is. Me like just just be who you are. But then I yeah. feel like the more and more he show himself on social media, and I don't know if this is the real him or not, but the more he show whoever he's showing right now. Yeah, the more I'm like, bro, I'm cool off you, dog. You on Facts. some whole Facts. different. But you know, I think. 
Um, I'm very excited for Gunner's project. I'm super, super excited. I think he's gonna um kind of reset the tone. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm bring glad he's everybody. shining. Huh? I said I'm glad he's shining. I'm like, I'm yeah. glad like his the response, mm -hmm. you know, that people thought they were gonna get from him was like totally different. Like people yep. like shit. I'm 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 playing this shit. This shit Literally. for a minute, people were kind of abrasive a little bit, like oh, he can no. end up listening. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I ain't gonna shit. lie, listen, it I, ride. I was like at first, I was like, man, I ain't gonna lose the gunner. And then he came out with uh, what was that first that radio hit he dropped? As soon as he got out, uh -huh. he got free. It was um, ah, I, I can't exactly think of it. About. It was something he dropped, and it was like, I'm sorry, this shit's a banger. Like I don't care what this. Oh, name. bread and butter is that what it was? Yeah, I think yeah. it was. No, 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 no. I was like, this just a vibe. What do like, you mean? He yeah. just be skating on the beats. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That. I'm like, he might have told. Know. I don't know, but hey, this motherfucker is hit. <laughs> I love Gunna. I love him. So he gonna reset the whole vibes. That's okay. what I'm hoping for. So that's cool. <laughs> that's what I'm going on. <laughs> they just doing the most. Yeah, Man, facts. I love it. But hey, before and but before this point though, the women been taking off. Oh my gosh, yes. I and like I'm it. not. I love. I love women. I I don't listen to women rappers because I just like that's just. I feel like I just thing. Don't. Yeah. But. <laughs> The last year, I'm like, mm -hmm. you can't not. I don't know how you're not listening to Lotto. And like, I don't know how you're not listening because, yeah, they are taking it right now. So. I like Big Glow. I like Glow. Big Glow. Yes, everybody love Glow. Yeah, how big Glow, love cool. Glow. I love Big Glow. She got that I, deep Memphis accent and her beats be hard and, and, <laughs> and, <laughs> and she's so fucking so small, silly. though. Like, she's her so voice tiny. don't match her size. Yeah, no, I love her. Her and Meg, I'm the biggest fans. <laughs> Y'all don't, don't fuck with sexy red. Go big sexy. Uh, of course. <laughs> sex, hey, sexy red be hey, she got some shit though. She, she know really how to make do. hits. You know how she to make really hits. That's, that, that's what I'm saying. She got, got some nice bangers. beat, catchy. Like she knows how to play on like the 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 social media aspect of it. She knows yeah. what will work. Let me say yeah. that. Am I a fan of her actual like lyrics? Do I think she can like rap really good. Me personally, I don't Absolutely think she can. Absolutely not. She's entertaining. But well, she's entertaining, she entertaining. And she's herself. Yeah. And she's from the hood and she made her way out of nothing. So I respect that. Inspired so get your money, somebody. woman. Yeah, I love I love people who stay true to who they are when they get famous. I'm like, yeah, do that. Yeah, don't switch up. <laughs> yeah, don't I hate switch. when people switch up. So yeah, I love it. Yes. Yeah. And speaking of switching up, man, switching <laughs> the gears a little bit right here. Look at you. You know that how to segue switch your crazy. I mean, listen, I, I ain't knew this. That was that. crazy. That was dope. Was <laughs> <laughs> you know how to switch up too, but in a positive way. Okay. When you go through, again, when you do your research, go through Jasmine's years of her different looks. I'm talking about fashion right now. <laughs> you can rock the boots with the with the with the jeans. You can go, you can go dress with it. You can go tomboy with it. Where does your fashion inspiration draw from? Are you are you on? Are you on apps looking? Are you is it is it Mom Dukes? Like where where's this inspiration coming from? Um, I think honestly, I don't draw much inspiration from anywhere. It's really just my own style. Okay, I think okay. my mom always says like I've been dressing myself since I was in I think second grade. She would like fight me on like no, I have to like pick your stuff out, and I'm like I got this. Like I'm good. I, okay. I can pick my stuff out. You wear my I just shit. Love clothes so much. I like. Cannot wait for the day that I can afford what I really want because I'm really about to be styling on y'all. About to be going <laughs> but crazy. I'm about to be Bolo, going you said y'all ain't seen nothing yet, Bolo. Y'all ain't seen nothing. nothing. But no, I really do love just putting stuff together. I think it's so fun. Uh, I, I do have some people that I like. I do watch them and I like their style a lot. I think Karuchi is one of them. She's like my favorite. Yeah. Like her style is just, I, it's like exactly what I would wear. Um, so I do have like those one or two girlies that like I I just think they're so dope and their style is good. But for the most part, it's it's internal. You just gotta wear what you how you feel. How you feel? <laughs> hey, it, it, it's inner, Bolo. Like just some natural. Like either you born with it, it ain't you on like... you. It's in you. <laughs> it's in you. It's in you. It's yeah. in you. I feel it. So let me let me ask you this. So speaking of fashion, right? So uh -huh. now we're kind of continue to maneuver through the pathway of you know baggy clothes or mm -hmm. you know more of the pants that kind of flare out now versus the skinny jeans mm -hmm. and bigger clothes and stuff like that. What's your preference? Ooh. Oh, men or women? Men. Oh, I don't know. I honestly feel like I think back to the, it's not on you. It's in you. I think a man has to rock whatever he's wearing. It has to go with wear. his own vibe. So, Y'all didn't catch that. that. Is a bar. Yeah. I don't, I can't even say like, oh, skinny jeans versus like, it's right. just for 
if he's pulling that shit off and he know he got that shit on, ain't nothing else to say, huh? Like that's it. <laughs> I feel like that's it. so. Yeah, I don't have a preference. It's really all about like the how you carry it, how you rock it. Yeah. Wow, I like, I love that, I love that, man. Let me ask you this then, since we since we on this topic, you just brought it Uh-oh. up, <laughs> and we're and we're real close to our final segment, but I got a few more questions before, before we get there. Okay. I don't know your status, and you ain't got to say that. You ain't got to. You ain't, that's up to you. You ain't got to say that. But just speaking in gen, general generalities, does Jasmine have an actual type of man that she likes? If so, can we get that description here on the porch? I'm gonna sit back, take a deep <laughs> breath, take a sip, take a time. Oh gosh, um, I really don't have a type. <laughs> I feel like my type is very, I'm so into like how a man carries himself. And I think the the biggest thing that I'm attracted to in a man is the respect that he gets. I think that is like the most attractive thing in the world. So he can have on like gym shorts and a t-shirt, but I like, if everybody respects him, like that is going to catch my attention before anything at all, anything physical. Now I do need him to be taller than me. <laughs> how, how, how tall are you? How tall are you though? Five, six and a half, five, seven. Right. So I feel like that's not too hard. I, that's reasonable. That's reasonable. That's okay. re- yeah, do that. Yeah. And I like to wear heels. So I need somebody, you know. Ooh. Yeah. Heels. Three, five, eleven, five, six foot, probably. Yeah. Okay. If we can do this, if we can get to the six, then. You get to the six. <laughs> that's what they say. That's what they say. They say yeah. six. Yeah, I, I, I told, don't. Hey, Bolo, I always tell. I'm like five eleven and a half, man. Five eleven. <laughs> <I'm> five eleven. <laughs> throw the tim, throw the tims on, and we can talk. Every time I was getting recruited for football, I, I put my tims on to get that extra little, that little extra like, little height. Yeah, good. I'm six feet. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think um, the intangible of respect, and then um, taller than me, I think we are starting somewhere. <laughs> starting point. Yeah, that's, hey, bro, you know, that's very reasonable though. Cause nowadays, man, you hear about the dating pool right now. It's kind of crazy. I heard it's treacherous. Sides, men got crazy expectations. You hear women out here, you can't go to Cheesecake Factory right, no, no more. You can't <laughs> all type of stuff going on. So, so yeah. like, hey, hey, you go out, you gotta pay for all my friends. Yeah, you know what I'm saying like crazy. Geez, I'm wow. like, dang, he can't take you to a restaurant, and then people are like, um, coffee shop is not a date. I'm like, where? I would love to go to a coffee shop. <laughs> That's like, crazy. Like they I, said, oh. they, then we then we read that during the day. They was talking about um, it's not a date going out to eat. That's crazy. Yeah, it, it was a long list. It was like uh, it was I a long eat. list of yeah, stuff. Yeah, it was. Uh huh. Movies. I'm like, damn. I can't, movies. What the fuck we supposed to do? I'm like, these. I, I got know. some of my best dates at these locations. Like, what are we talking about here? Like, <laughs> and I and I feel like the social media is controlling the narrative of like relationships too, because yeah. people. Put that in their brain, and then yep. now they have that expectation of that. Like, like, like you really? don't even, you don't even really think like this. It's just like what is expected in this right. like, stories that you want to tell. You you want to go back and tell your friends. And I think honestly, what's doing the most damage is like being able to see all these women that are like getting tricked on, and like you know, you can put any, you can show anything on Instagram. So right. you know, you have no idea where this is coming from, or like right. whatever. And like love it for the girlies who are in healthy relationships and getting tricked on. Like that's beautiful. But I think when people go on Instagram and they see like this girl with this um 120 rose bouquet, yeah, shit her on a normal Tuesday, they're like, why didn't my dude send me flowers? in the last week and now now she's pissed and now she's like you know just stuff like that so i think seeing what uh, what's happening with other people has made it um difficult for men when it comes to dating um and obviously we we got it bad too but y'all already know that but i think um it's just the expectations and and seeing what other people have and comparing it makes it a lot Comparison Part. is the thief, the thief of joy. Of joy. Of joy. Yes. Thousand percent, bro. But we all do it to to an extent, even subconsciously. You just yeah. roll in and stuff, and your algorithm works to your favor too, <laughs> for what you want to see and stuff. So you just right. like, damn, she got this, isn't that, or damn, right. like, you know what I mean? And even as right. men, like we, hmm. like we're so our ego is something, man, and everything <laughs> it's in our nature to be like competitive, and we we, we want to be. Number one hey, in everything. Yeah. I want to look the best. I want to be the strongest. I want to have the most money, the best car, the best Thanks. job, best looking girl mm-hmm. next to my side. So naturally, when you seeing like these, you know, uh, like you say, these women getting flown out, getting Louis bag, Chanel bag. As a man, if you are in a, in a relationship with with a lady, you like, damn, I gotta, I gotta get to that level. I gotta figure. Right. I gotta, you know, what I mean, keeping up with the Joneses, so to speak, right? right? And then you, right. you catch yourself in bad position. So 
It's yeah. crazy, man. I love social media because I think it helps. It's opened up so many doors. And like my actual job at Fox is because of social media. So I love yep. it. But at the same time, though, there's a negative side to it as well. And sometimes mm-hmm. that overshadows a positive. 1000 percent I think it's very difficult these days to like find people that are not worried about that. Um, and it's no no diss to them because it's very easy to get, like we just said, it's very easy to get sucked in because of the way the algorithm works. But um it's it's really definitely a pin in a haystack when you find <laughs> when you find someone that doesn't, you know, doesn't give much weight to it. So um 100%. So, yeah. so my last question before we, we move on to our final segment is what happened to a tipsy bike? <laughs> oh, no. I was hoping the questions that you had, I was like, he went down the tipsy bike tunnel. I know he did. <laughs> I went to a lot of places. I went to a lot of places. I can't tell you. I caught a few people. Bolo caught a few people. We, we, we know people Make in it. Dallas. We got, we got connections everywhere, Jazz. We yes. got eyes everywhere. Yes. I'm so glad you asked, actually. So me and my best friend started this blog. Uh, it started as a blog. It was, wasn't was even like a brand. We literally were just like, okay, um, we lived together our last semester of college at LSU and we were going out, you know, that last semester where you got two classes, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like we really went to school. So, and we were both servers. So we were, you know, at restaurants all the time, eating all the time. And then whenever we would get off work, we'd be like, let's go to this bar. Let's try this restaurant. Let's do this. And we both like, I love good food. Like the thing that makes me the happiest is eating good food with good company, like having a good conversation. And she is like the the exact same and so we kept doing this and finding new places and we were like we need to document this like this is we're having a blast this is so fun so we were at um a bar downstairs at our um apartment one time and we came up with the name off like in like two seconds yeah. made a profile um and then built it from there we both moved to Dallas. She's from Midland, but her family lives in Dallas now. Um, and so both moved to Dallas after college. Uh, so we that's when it started to really take off. Um, all of our, you know, family and friends was was doing it uh, or was following us. I think um, it was kind of when, you know, influencer or like food bloggers like started to like, you know, ascend or whatever. So we were like catching a wave, um, building the actual brand, got our logo made, was selling merchandise, all this good stuff. It was so fun. And then she got accepted to law school. Um, and so oh, <laughs> she moved to, and I'm not blaming this on her, obviously, but yeah. just life, like this yeah, is right. how the cookie crum- crumbles. And so she moved, she goes to Southern Law School. She graduates next month. So excited. Nice. Anyway, um, so she moved back to BR um, and she's in a four year program. So she's been there the last four years. And so it just became extremely difficult for us to like capture content right. to get, because our brand was jazz and Sabrina. And so it just became really difficult for us to like do things together, um, and kind of build it, um, together. And so that's, that's kind of why it fell off. I got into school a year later. And so I was getting my MBA. She's getting a law degree. Like it was damn near impossible. So right. uh, it's still looming in the background. It's still something we care about. I'm praying that she moves back to Dallas, um, in August after she takes the bar. Um, and so I think we'll probably revive it at that point, but it's still, it's still there. It's still floating around. <laughs> That's cold. Cause the name is cold. The name I is know. Awesome. I'm like, we cannot let this go. I love, I love it. And it, it also gives you, gives me an avenue, um, or an escape, like, you know, to be creative and, um, get that out and, you know, do brand, my own branding. And it, it helps, helps me learn. Like I built our website from the bottom up and I've never oh. done that before. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. reaching out to get a logo built, stuff like that is super cool and so i learned a lot like in that process so i would love to pick it back up but it was it, it was fun for those few years <laughs> dope concept man yeah yeah Hope you guys can bring it back you know what i mean everything that's meant to happen will be so we there shall see there um, you go. moving on to our final topic man our final segment excuse me uh and this is our fun segment we like to call it. the whole show been fun but this is like our real fun kind of a gamey type segment and it's called plead the fifth Oh, God. So we have a list of questions here for you. Oh, God. <laughs> ten, qu- ten questions. It'll be, it'll be, a, it's completely random questions. And you either answer or you say, I plead the fifth. But here's the caveat. You only have three total plead the fifths you can use. Of Ooh. 10? Of 10. Oh, wow. So you kind of got to just choose why because you don't really know what's coming next. So you kind of just got to decide, like, is it worth me using this plead the fifth now? Should I hold it till later? The questions are a complete mixture of everything, though. Like it, okay. it might be some real life, might be some all sports. It's not all. It's not all one side or it's a mixture of everything. So that's okay. get your one hit. Okay. So three plead the fifths. There's ten questions. 
And I'm going to start it off, Bolo. I'm scared. Got it. <laughs> I think this first one is cool. Okay. Better place to live, oh. Texas or Louisiana? Live, Texas. <laughs> Here it is. Easy. Easy. Yes. Go. Better economy. <laughs> okay. Num number two, best team in the NFC East, Cowboys or Washington Commanders? Uh, right now, I'm going to have to play today. <laughs> those of you who don't know she works with the cowboys obviously her father is a washington legend so kind of oh. between rock and a hard place why did y'all do that <laughs> hey look look that that's one yep that's got one two more. Okay, got okay, two okay. more okay next one what's the craziest dm you have ever received <laughs> um i I cannot remember. I will say that. But recently, somebody messaged me, give me another chance to marry you. Oh. Which. That's intense it, as fuck. Yeah, that was pretty crazy to me. So. Mm. <laughs> just for, like, just for clarity, that was like the initial message? That was the, it was responding to a random story that I put up. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Hey, I mean. That's different. That's, that's aggressive. That, that's a way to shoot your shot. But yeah. It, yeah uh, part of me, I'm trying to think. Part of me as a man, do I do I respect it, Bolo? Though, like, do you respect him? This been like, she mm -mm. said, nah. Mm -mm. See, Cause, it's because the the part about another chance means that you had one. So no, <laughs> that part, that no. part, that's yeah. true. Damn. The yeah. chance part, missed it. Hey, missed his chance. All that's right. the craziest uh, recent one, but people be saying some crazy stuff. I can only imagine. I, 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 I know you women. You, you, I got it bad. I got it bad. Yeah, I got it bad. Yeah, pray for y'all in them DMs. Um, <laughs> okay, number four. So, when in a relationship, when you're in a relationship, what's your favorite way to make up with your with your boyfriend after a fight? Well, I haven't been in a relationship in a long time, but I really like to buy like just a little like thinking of you type of thing or like okay. you mentioned mm. this or you said this so I'm gonna get this so I would probably do something like that so you're I'm more like, of gift giving yes. like love gift you. giving that's my love language I think yeah I have a couple of top love languages but gift giving is up there <laughs> gift okay. receiving too but hey the gift. love the love language stuff is hard because people are like what's your love language? I'm like shit I got like all, like, of all of them kind of yeah like <laughs> yeah kind of but you but you got but you got one though that's gonna like make you like you yeah. you you receive it better than most yeah like yeah that's very true what are the I five languages again it's gift giving it's physical it's, touch it's uh, quality affirmation time. quality yeah, time, time. words affirmation and acts of service acts of service, acts of service. Yeah. yeah 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 it's tough for me quality time is big but it's physical yeah. like i need my physical <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's tough i'm definitely word to affirmation and gift giving yeah, I like them words. As I've gotten older, the words, the words they hit, they hit, they hit different, man. Yeah, they they they, they touch they the also soul hit now. Different when you from somebody you care about, you know what I'm right, saying? Right, right. Like Facts. I want to hear from you. <laughs> I hear it from people all the time, but like it means more, you know. So like the, the, the flowers you, smell better from you. It smell better coming yeah. from you. Yeah. As a man Facts. too, when like when, when your woman like believe in you. Yeah, it's like it's like all right, she. I'm gonna go ahead and get this. I'm gonna get this done. Get this done for us. Like exactly. You want me to lift yeah. this house, Word. baby? I got you. Even Word. if she lying to me, <laughs> lie to me, baby. But Make it sound good. Tell me that lie. Make it sound <laughs> good. Have to know. <laughs> yeah, I, love, I love it. Okay. Yeah. Next one. All right. You got to choose one. Okay. No going out to eat for an entire year, or no sex of any form for an entire year. Which one? I could do no sex for sure. There you go. Easy. She has, she has that quick too. Like, it's, it's only because I've done it before. So I'm like, that's easy. But going out to eat, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I don't know. I, I love going out to eat though. I'm not going to lie. Like, I, we got, we don't, we cook, a couple, we cook a couple days of the week, but we go out to eat a lot. So yeah. like a, imagining not doing that for a year, it sounds impossible. Imagine meal prepping for, for 50. Yeah, that should sound crazy. It sounds crazy, don't it, but I'm, like, <laughs> yeah. I'm not doing it. I'm sorry. There you go. Yeah, I love going out to eat. That should sound. You just get kind of get ready, like, you know, yeah. in the vibe. The so many different forms. There's so many different forms of going out to eat, too. Correct. You know yeah. Different levels of going out to eat. So, yeah. yeah. That's real. But the sex part's up, too, though. So, uh. <laughs> hey, brother, with all that being said, with all that being said, uh, we can bring, we can bring, we, we on the 50th floor eating hibachi. Look, yeah. <laughs> we're going to bring it to us. That's hilarious. Oh, my God. That's funny. Okay. The next one. 
What's something that people may consider weird or a little different that actually turns you on? Um, I love I love a little chuckle, the lows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because um, it's the porch, just the porch. Yeah. <laughs> That's we all good... family. We all family. We all family. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to plead the fifth. There you go. Ooh. So she has one more left, y'all. Damn. How yeah. many questions we got? That yeah, was number. What? That was six. number six. So we are number six. Three questions left. Uh oh. Okay. Okay. This was an easy one. It's lighthearted. Okay. Team Riri or Beehive? <gasps> I have to choose. Oh, I thought it was an easy one. I'm sorry. Oh my gosh, that's crazy! This might be the hardest question I asked. That's damn like that. Kobe. That's damn like Kobe and LeBron, bro. Yeah, that was Kobe. Kobe. I'm baby. Yep, of course, of course. I'm gonna have okay. to answer it because I don't want to use my plea the fifth. But I have two answers. So if we're going music, I'm definitely Team Beehive all day, every day. If we're going fashion, it's Team it's Fashion and Beauty is Team Riri for sure. Ooh, mm. you answered that very well, not to piss anybody off. Well, you <laughs> no, you say that one thing, Bolo. On, on either side, it's just a, it's a problem. So you answered that the perfect way. I yeah. do want to say before you jump in, Bolo, I do believe that Rihanna's music is not fully appreciated. Mm -hmm. I, like, of course, you can't. I agree with that. I mean, Beyonce been doing this for so long. Like, it's hard. Like, it's Beyonce. I get it. Yeah. But Rihanna has nothing but bangers. If bangers. you ever get some time, y'all, just to go listen to her catalog. It's yeah. like golly, like reality. But but, I, but you also gotta look at it too though. Like we we've entered into like a new generation now, too, mm -hmm. where a lot of people from this newer generation haven't really listened to you know the Rihanna's of the world. Like the she region. was kind of popping <laughs> like yeah. when we were coming up through like you know, elementary high school, like you yeah. know, so now these elementary high school, they I don't know too yeah. much about no music from Rihanna because she ain't putting yeah. nothing out. Beyonce yeah. always, you know. Well, and that's that's what I appreciate about Beyonce. I mean, I think she's a musical genius, but she knows how to stay relevant too. Like right, she right. knows how to. Well, Rihanna yeah, just she just busy becoming a billionaire. Sorry, right. that's a, I mean, that's, that's a fact. I'm like that's she got fact. the fashion and uh and, and beauty the on line. Like music. anybody that try to start make a makeup line, a skincare line. Sorry, girl, I'm buying fancy. <laughs> Who would have ever already, thought she already that? Paid the way. Who would have yeah. ever thought in 2024 that? Like as of right now, Rihanna is more rich than Beyonce. Now, rich, now Beyonce got hella money, of course, but yeah. we did like we would have never just thought that though. Like never, never. her money is long. He's a big Rihanna's dog. money is long. <laughs> I love shout it. Shout out to both of them, though. Shout out to both. That's a good real. <laughs> okay, number eight. In your opinion, who are the top three greatest LSU football players over the last twenty years? Last twenty. So that starts when. That is in 2004. 20, oh, 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 yeah. Four. I'm not an LSU historian now. Well, let's, okay. well, let's, well, let's go last back to 10, that decade then. Would last, last 10 be 14, better for you? Last 14, 14 and 24. Last yeah, let's do last oh, 10. Oh, man. That's 2014. 2014. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah. Yep. So think back. <laughs> Doing Joe Burrow. <laughs> got, no, for real though. You, in there. you I mean, gotta put him in there. I mean, I gotta champion. put Joe in there. I would, I mean, this is probably recency bias, but I would say Justin Jefferson too. Ooh, I mean, it is. Um, it's damn. Just, think about when you was there, when you was at the parties and you was turning up at, uh, what's it called? Yeah, yeah not even. LSU not, Village. Yeah, not even like from like do it. Uh, <laughs> What about what about from like a, a, a like popularity like like oh man Odell of course Odell one thousand percent yeah he was the most popular football player while I was there at least for oh, sure. even even at like even at LSU like, like I know before like OBJ he, became a right. mega mega star after he made that catch in the NFL you're yes. saying LSU though he was already His like fame was already he was, like yes he was the LSU star <laughs> like before the world knew who he was like we knew Odell Beckham Jr. for sure. Got, got you, you. got yeah. you. So, now, if we extended it like to more years, I would have had to throw in the Honey Badger, though. That was yeah. a big time. Come on, Honey yeah. Badger's crazy. Yeah, that's yeah. one of my favorite okay. LSU players for sure. He is dope. Yeah. Okay. 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 Twenty thirteen. Yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah, I mean, he got kicked out, but yeah. <laughs> All right, we got what? Two more left. Two All right, more, two yep. more left. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Not a most underrated song to twerk to of all time. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! 
Because you know what, though? Because in today's era, man, people, these kids don't dance no more. We don't party. Like You go to a party, everybody on their phone. Like I grew up, we grew up, early 2000s. We was dancing at the we party. We was dancing, party. twerking, ain't no more hip winding, just, just all good that. Vibes. Just it was, had it no going. Phones. Yeah. I would say, and not even the Beyonce version, I would say Before I Let Go. <laughs> Before I before let go, why we talking before I let go? You really like you didn't even need Yeah. Okay, I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying to get the rhythm. I ain't gonna lie, that shit got me weak right now. <laughs> yeah, you gotta just yeah. catch the beat. <laughs> you just gotta say hey, before Grandma over there twerking to before I let go, cracking the barbecue is cracking, y'all. Cracking, I'm telling you, you can twerk to it. You can find that beat. Hey, I'm cutting that clip, and that's gonna go viral. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> before I let go, I love it. I love it. <laughs> okay, number ten. Uh -oh. A lot of pressure right now. Okay. Uh oh, I still got a. Uh, we going No, we got a bonus one. We got a bonus. Damn. And Bolo, feel free to do your th like. If you if you like if you like what's there, cool. If you feel like it's too easy, you do your thing. Okay. Oh, God. Favorite sibling. <laughs> I, I can't even answer that because nobody's coming to my head. Everybody got one. I plead the fifth. Ooh. <laughs> okay, hit her with that bonus, D Nail. Yeah. Hit her with the bonus. Hit her with the bonus. Hit her with the bonus. <sighs> Should, should I do so? Look, Bolo. Should I, should I do that that first that first that first year dig that first bonus, first or should dig. I do the second bonus? Ooh, the first year dig. The first oh. one. Okay. First year dig. Facts. All right. Check me out. You got to marry one, date one, leave one. Okay. LSU, SMU, Dallas Cowboys. Oh gosh, I would. Date? Oh gosh. Married date. Hard. Married date breakup, basically. Okay, I'm I'm breaking up with SMU. Okay. Love NBA, you. NBA? Ooh. Yeah, love them, but okay. I gotta go. Just comparatively. Yeah. I gotta break up with you. Yeah. I'm gonna date the Cowboys and I'm gonna marry LSU. Damn. Yeah. You know what, y'all? Anybody listening, if y'all listen to this whole podcast, you take one thing out of this episode. Fucking LSU. Go to LSU, y'all. All right. She, she was selling LSU this whole episode. I'm trying to tell you. I feel like I need to get to the campus right now. I didn't like, want to like have a popping. flashback, Bolo, and like go to homecoming and just turn you know up one I'm more saying? time with my I'm old ass. Like, Look, dang. if you go to LSU homecoming, you're going to think it's a, a HBCU for real. I'm already knowing, though. Like, like yeah. down there in the South, like, yeah, it's crazy. It's homecoming is so fun. Yeah. Everybody yeah, got, no, I got, love, got jambalaya love. and just Ooh, food, just yep. busting tents going. Oh, me. Crazy. <laughs> My favorite yeah. thing ever. Yeah. Yeah. I really okay. love food, y'all. My mouth is watering literally right now. And I, I love, love spicy it. food too. I gotta, oh. Why haven't I been? Listen, I, I ain't really traveled a lot yet, y'all. Like, I got to make my way out there. I got to go to LSU. I got to go to a lot of hey. places and just eat. Plan to go to a, a game. Um, Make sure it's a night game and you right. will have the time of your life. God, man. Yeah. I'm going to go do it, man. But look, <laughs> we, we, need, we need to do an eight, a eight game college tour. Ooh. Um, porch, though. Porch. Tailgate style. Oh, I love that. Yes. Set it up, Jazz. Oh, my bro. I, I was going to say, let me know if you need some marketing help. I got you. you. you can hire Jazz <laughs> on the marketing side. If she wants to come, come in and be a special host for LSU yeah. or some other spot, we'll do that and go from there. So We are coming to a college town near yeah. you. Yes, I love you. Yes. Yes. Jazz, we wanna, I know we, we, went, we went a little longer, but man, thank you so much for being on the show here. Uh, it was a, it was a blast having you on. This is your time. If you want to shout out anything you have going on, or you want to tell the fans where they can find you on social media, this is your moment to just name and list, highlight whatever you want to. Amazing. Well, I I, I mean I don't have anything to really shout out. I just um, want to say thank y'all again, um, just for you know inviting me on the podcast. I know um, I, I commented on on a post that y'all did recently because I was like, yeah, I'm I'm feeling that. <laughs> so I was so excited when you asked me to to um, join. So I just appreciate y'all. Um, you can follow me on Instagram if you want to. It's uh, Jazz Renee WMS, short for Williams. Um, not on TikTok. So don't find me on there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, same thing on on uh, Twitter too, Jazz Renee WMS. So appreciate y'all for inviting me. It was super fun. <laughs> Absolutely, we appreciate you. This is the Porch Podcast, my bro. We did it again. Yes, sir. We, we did. got another one. <laughs> God is good, man. All As we time. close out. Make sure y'all follow us, Deport Podcast underscore. We on all of your listening platforms, man. We appreciate the people that appreciate us. We spread in love. Hey, we understand that the days are long and the years are short, but just make sure that the best you is the best you. And we out. Peace. Peace. <laughs>